Hi friends, this is Daniel Research and welcome to my new video. A few days ago Ripple has released its XRP Ledger Developers Portal, which is aimed to help developers to build their own applications on the top of XRP Ledger. I also began explore this portal and familiarize myself with XRP Ledger from technical point of view and how it works. As of now, developers portal contains only three use case scenarios for XRP Ledger. In this video, I will implement the first one and I will show you how to set up your own XRP Ledger validator. XRP Ledger validator is a server that participates in XRP Ledger consensus process. Together with other validators, it says whether the transaction is valid or not. At some extent, ledger validation is similar to Bitcoin mining, but you need much less money to run validator, server consumes much less electricity comparing to ASICs, and of course validator's work is not rewarded in XRPs or any other digital assets. So what is the point or incentive to run validator if you are not, cannot make any money with it? Well, if you are a holder of XRP tokens, running validator may, may help you to increase network's stability and reliability. Also, every new validator is a small contribution to XRP ledger decentralization. Here is the list of XRP ledger validators. Currently, there are 150 servers that secure Ripple's network. And as you see, many of these servers are owned by Ripple itself. But with every two new independent servers, Ripple will shut down one of their own validators, helping in this way to decentralize network. Basically, there are three simple steps how to set up XRP Ledger Validator. Firstly, we need to prepare infrastructure and configure Linux server. The second thing we need to do is to download and install Ripple D service. And lastly, enable validation mode on our Ripple D service. As you see, there are two other optional tasks, but I will skip them in my video. Let's begin with the first step infrastructure planning. This page contains detailed information and requirements to the infrastructure, but I'll go to the major part recommendations. So, operating system we need Ubuntu, but also Red Hat and CentOS are supported. Three cores CPU, solid state drive, and at least 8 gig of RAM. For production mode we need 32 gigs. And of course, high speed low latency network. Ripple recommends to deploy validators on bare metal servers but virtual machines may also work without significant performance degradation. I do not have bare metal server that meets Ripple's requirements, that is why I'll use Google Compute Engine to deploy validator, but you may also use uh, Microsoft Azure or Amazon AWS. So let's create virtual machine. Let's set the name, XRP test validator zone let's use by default let's choose configuration let's customize it we need four cores four cores and eight gig of ram eight gig of ram okay now we need to choose operating system image so i will use Instead of Ubuntu, I will use Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 because Ripple D service is provided as RPM package and I do not like alien service for Ubuntu. So we'll use Red Hat, click select, and okay, let's add some disk space. So let's make 20 gigs select and hit create. So now our virtual machine is being created. Virtual server is already created. So let's open terminal in browser and begin configuration.
Well, we have connected to the server, so let's check it. Let's check this disk space. We have 20 gigs as requested and memory. So we have 8 gig gigs of RAM. First step is completed. Let's go to the installation of Ripple D service. According to installation guide, first thing we need to do when installing Ripple D service on CentOS and Red Hat, we need to install Ripple RPM repository. So let's copy this command and paste it into terminal. Yes, repository is installed. And now let's go to the second step. We need to install Ripple D software. So let's copy also this command and paste it into terminal. So this may take some time. Finally, Ripple D is installed. But look at the version. Today is Tuesday, May 15th, when Ripple has released R Ripple D version 1.00. But it is, for some reason, is not available as of now for installation. So I have installed previous version. Okay, now let's go to installation guide and configure Ripple D service to start on system boot. Let's also copy this command, paste it here. So yes, symlink has been created and le let's launch Ripple D service. Service is launched, we can check it into top. As you see, the first one is Ripple D service that consumes the most of computing resources. Well, we have finished the second step installation of Ripple D service. It takes several minutes for service to synchronize with the network and prepare local copy of the ledger. In a few minutes we'll have fully functional Ripple server, which is not member of consensus process yet. Synchronization is completed and we can work with the Ripple service. But before we move further to step 3, validation and so on, let's play with it a little bit. Let's type the following command. opt ripple bin ripple d and let's, let's check account balance of Binance Exchange. So account info and XRP address of Binance. Here it is. Here is response. So we have account name, actually which is address and balance. Balance is provided in drops so we can remove the right six digits. So basically Binance holds 880 million approximately XRPs, which is significant amount. You can go to Ripple, a Ripple D API and find probably hundreds or even thousands of commands that you can run on your server. But let us finish validators part. We have three tasks here. Firstly, we need technically enable validation mode on Ripple D server, then share our public key with other Ripple D servers, and once some of these server servers will begin add our public key to their trusted list, we will become a trusted validator. So, firstly, we need to create key pair with this command copy and paste it. Okay, key pair, key pair is created and in store, is stored in validators keys JSON file. This file should, not, should, should be securely stored and should not be shared with anyone. But this is just a training video so I can show it how it looks like. So we have public key and secret key, of course. Now, once keys are created, we need to generate a validator token. So let's copy this part of the command, paste it, and also paste the path to validator's keys.json file. Okay, 
copy and paste. Token is created and now we should edit ripple config file and paste this validator token into this file. So let's copy the part of code we need to insert in config file, copy, and let's edit it. In order to edit file I'll use vi because nothing better is present here. So vi opt ripple etc ripple dconfig and let's go to the bottom of the file and insert our code here. So validator is commented, our public key and token. Now write q exit and restart ripple d service. In order to restart we can copy and paste this command. Okay, let's wait for a start. Or let's run server info command opt ripple bin ripple d server info. This command shows the state of our server, but currently I am interested in this line public key validator, which equals to the key we have just generated and pasted in config file. So our server now runs in validator mode, but it is untrusted validator. This means that server participates in consensus process, but its decisions are disregarded by other servers. So we need to wait some time until some of the trusted validators will add our public key into their trusted list and our server will become trusted validator. Few hours later we can find our server on validator registry list. Let's find it by public key. And here it is. Here is our server. It has made 3000 validations and it is unverified because we have not linked it to any domain. So let's click on it and see actually the same information number, percentage of agreements and disagreements. Domain is unverified because I have skipped step of domain verification. But if you have your own domain and SSL private key, you may sign validator's public key with SSL private key and link your domain to validator server. As you see, validator setup process is pretty straightforward and simple and actually every XRP holder may create their own validator server. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want more videos and leave your questions in the comment section below. Bye!